Welcome back to Mailbag Monday. This one's going to be a little bit bizarre uh, because I was trying a different camera and, well, it didn't record audio. So, therefore, I'm going to have to voice this over and pretend that I'm excited and have no idea what's going to happen. But obviously I do. Let's get started here. First thing in, it says PCB heat transfer paper which makes sense because I ordered some of that a long time ago and in fact that's what it is. So this stuff, uh, what do we got here? It says it's 250 by 290 millimeters, which is about right. Works out to eight and a half by 11 uh, in paper sizes, which is the standard North American paper size. Now this stuff you do your circuit design on your computer and then you print it onto this using a laser printer. At one point I thought you'd be able to get away with a uh, an inkjet, but no, it needs laser because it's a heat process. So basically you take your laser printed uh, artwork, you heat transfer it from the paper onto some copper clad board such as this here and uh, then you peel the paper off and the toner stuck to the board acts as your etch resist and then you can just etch it with whatever type of etchant you want to use um, either ferric chloride or some of the new easier to get a hold of possibly equally toxic acid mixes Okay, as often happens with stuff that's many, many months old, I can't find the actual listing. The sellers deleted it, I guess. Uh, but I paid a dollar sixty-seven from uh, Lid eighty-four, and basically, there's lots of other sellers selling it for the same, for the same similar prices. A little bit more expensive for shipping because it's months later this is just that random one of the uh, sellers uh, oh use the laser printer not inkjet okay that's important information and that makes sense because the laser toner laser printer toner is thermally set it's essentially powdered black uh, hot melt glue kind of sort of um, which is why it will work with a heat transfer okay so you print it onto the transfer paper you stick the transfer paper onto the board you heat it and that will transfer your uh, your image or in this case your circuit layout onto the board okay next in is LED module it says And initially it looked sort of like one of those LED rings, but that was just at the initial glance. What it really is, once I get it open, is a type of Arduino module called a lily pad. Now these things are designed to be used as uh, for wearable electronics. If you're doing costuming and stuff with LEDs and other stuff in it, some of that really fancy costuming that has servo motors in it to move bits and pieces, that kind of thing. And then these mounting holes on the side aren't typically intended for soldering to, though you could. Um, what they're really intended for is putting, stitching through them with conductive thread and using that conductive thread stitched through your fabric project to uh, power your various different modules, LEDs or whatever. Now this one has A0 through A5 and D0 through D13, just like a standard Arduino Nano or something. And then positive and negative power in on the left hand side over by the pushy button there. The chip on it is just a standard uh, Atmel AT Mega 328P just like the Nano, just like the Pro Mini, just like the Uno, actually. So it can use exactly the same code. 
there's almost no difference. Now this one doesn't have USB connection on it. It's actually got the header pins for programming th using either an FTDI board or the CH340 programming board, similar to what I used a few months back when I was loading a bootloader onto a Nano that didn't come with one. New LilyPad 328, AT Mega 328, mainboard compatible for Arduino's IDE. I got it from Shenglongxi, um, but I didn't pay 315. I paid 213 for it when I bought it some time ago. Um, but this is the lowest price that this particular seller is selling it for. As usual, you can search with that and probably find it for cheaper from someone else. That photo is not exactly the same as the one that I got. Um, they've got Arduino on the silk screen. Mine just says Lily Pet Arduino. The main board consisting of an AT Mega 328 with bootloader. That's nice. And a minimum number of components to keep it small and simple as possible. It'll, hmm, they claim it'll run between 2 and 5 volts. That's interesting. Because a lithium-ion battery runs right in the middle of that range. This version yeah, uses it running at 8 megahertz. Okay. Now this one says ceramic capacitors. And it is indeed a whole bunch of ceramic capacitors. Let's get them all out here. That's a huge assortment. Um, I, th oh, I I didn't stop to count them right now. I'll, I'll tell you later what how many there are. But the reason I ordered them is my existing accumulation of ceramic capacitors includes a bunch up in the top of this box that I've had forever and then these 10 values from a different variety pack. But this is so many more values. And these are uh, mostly lower uh, nanofarad and picofarad values. But again, I'll, uh, I'll show you how, what they actually are in a second here. 1,000 pieces set, 50 values, 50 volt ceramic capacitors, assorted kits, assortment, hot sale, really, from best and best online. I paid 553 for it, Canadian. Um, at the moment, it's 583 American, so, wow. And they claim it's on sale right now. Anyway, I, uh, oh, and at the moment, because they still haven't got the message that the postal strike's over, it's not shipping to Canada. So be it. And there is the list of sizes, uh, values that I got along with the markings so I don't have to do the math on my own. Which is nice. I can, I always have trouble with these small capacitors. I don't know why. Um, but there's some common values, uh, 102, 101, uh, 301, 104, and then there's a bunch of other smaller ones. Again, for the price, I got 20 pieces of each one, 50 different values. There'll be some overlap with the kit that I've already got and the ones that I've already got in stock, but there's a lot of values that I don't have and you never know when you're going to need a part. This one says terminal barrier strip, which again is a reasonable thing that I would have ordered. And indeed that's exactly what it is. These are three different terminal barrier strips. Looks like they've got 12 positions each. They're kind of flexible and bendy in both directions, which is fine. Um, so these ones I'm planning on using on the railroad mostly. I've got some up there already for running different bus cables around um, track, bus power, a utility 5 volt bus, that kind of thing. And what I've done, I'll show you in a second, but what I've done is basically divide it in half. So I've got six on one side, uh, positive voltage, six on minus voltage. And then I've just, on the input side, whichever side I decide to be the input, I just jumper them all along and run the input off to wherever it comes from. And that gives me on the output uh, six parallel uh, positions to attach stuff to. Here, let me show you. Yeah, here's one of them that, uh, here's a different type of barrier strip that I've got installed on the railroad. And this is actually the track bus power. You can see on the left hand side, I've got 
uh, was it five of them jumpered together and on the right hand side I got five of them jumpered together one for the left rail and one for the right rail and that's essentially what I'm going to do with those other little guys that I just got too three pieces white 12 way barrier three amp barrier strip screw terminal block wire connection connector strip from TT-922 I did actually pay a dollar 99 Canadian for the three of these um, I, I searched around and I that seems to be the best price I could find at the time see somebody else signed them down here for two dollars and 77 cents for the three of them not much else to say down here three amps ABS plastic and copper and white and size and okay so it may be ABS plastic or it may be polyethylene or who knows but regardless um, screws to fix the wires reliably blah 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 this one says LED module and LED module one of each again not an unreasonable thing to uh, to come through the mail but instead we have another lily pad which is exactly the same as the previous one nothing new to say about this really yeah, it's just exactly the same as this one. And in the other package, we have a standard Arduino Nano CH340 chip on the back and an AT Mega 328P on the front. So functionally, it's pretty much exactly the same as the lily pad except for the nano has this the CH340 chip on the back to be the USB interface the only other difference really is the physical shape of the thing you could run exactly the same code on them and do exactly the same thing one thing I notice on these lily pads is they look like they've got an LED on them so let's see if they've got the blink sketch built in Let's clamp some 5 volts on here. And yes, they are preloaded with a blink sketch. That's slick. That also proves that it works. That's very nice. Let's try the other one. Positive to positive. Negative to negative. And there I go. Yep, and that one's also got the blink sketch preloaded from the factory. That's nice when they do that. It makes for a good test. Might as well test the nano while we're at it. And yes, there it is blinking. It's a different blink sketch, but it's blinking nonetheless. Okay, the nano and that uh, lily pad both came from Shenglong Shi. Shenglong Si. Um, couldn't find the exact listing, but this is another another one of the same nano from from the same peoples. Uh, the Nano cost me $2.13, the lily pad cost me $2.27. My best guess is that I bought some of this at auction and just added the other one on. Now I'm not sure why the two lily pads came in separate packages, even though I'm pretty sure they came from the same seller, but whatever. Welcome to the joys of ordering stuff from China. And there we go with today's mailbag items. Just quickly run through here. The capacitors, uh, where is it here? Took 25 days to get here. The first lily pad took 26 days. The lily pad and the nano took 27 days. The berry strips took 27 days. And that heat transfer film took three whole months yeah anyway uh, I want to apologize about the horrible video quality here like I said I was using a different f camera as my phone this time my uh, trusty old note 4 has finally died its software's gone corrupt or its firmware's gone corrupt and it's just constantly rebooting so I'm using an old phone that I found around the house and it's got no audio apparently and its video is pretty crappy and it doesn't focus very well. I'll have something better for the next one I promise. Anyway, 
want to thank you all for watching as usual. Thanks to my Patreon supporters for their ongoing support. They're helping me finance this little habit slash hobby of mine. Um, they're not paying the whole shot, but any anything is is helpful. I really do appreciate it. Thanks to everybody else for watching. And if you have anything to say about what's going on here, complaints about the video quality or whatever, um, comments, questions, all that good stuff, as usual, please join me down in the comment section and we'll talk about it. Thanks again. I will talk to you later.